The Bible slash Christianity Iceberg Tier 2 Descent into Hades This entry refers to the belief that after Jesus' crucifixion, he descended into the realm of the dead, Hades or Hell, to proclaim victory over sin and death. This is reflected in the Apostles' Creed, quote, He descended to the dead. This idea is based on passages like 1 Peter 3 18 20. Some traditions believe Jesus liberated the righteous souls who had died before his resurrection. The Horns of Moses Based on a mistranslation of Exodus 34, 29, 35 from Latin, which translated the Hebrew word for radiant as horned, this led to depictions of Moses with horns, most famously in Michelangelo's statue. The correct interpretation is that Moses' face shone with divine light after receiving the Ten Commandments. The Throne of God is Sentient Some mystical Jewish traditions, such as those found in Mark Kaba mysticism, depict God's throne as a living entity. The Mark of Cain In Genesis 4, after Cain kills Abel, God places a mark on him to protect him from being killed by others. The nature of this mark has led to a lot of speculation, with some suggesting it was a physical mark or sign of divine protection while others view it as a symbolic or spiritual marker. The 120 year life limit. Genesis 6-3 states that God decreed a 120 year lifespan for humanity in response to the growing wickedness of mankind. Some scholars interpret that as limiting human life expectancy while others see it as the time given until the flood would occur 120 years before judgment. King Agbar King Agbar V of Edessa is the subject of a Christian legend in which he allegedly corresponded with Jesus. According to the story, Abgar wrote to Jesus, asking him to come to Edessa and heal him of an illness. Jesus reportedly declined, but promised to send one of his disciples after his ascension. The legend is one of the earliest examples of Christian missionary work and is associated with the Apostle Thaddeus. Neanderthals were not created in God's image. This entry reflects the theological question arising from the discovery of Neanderthals and other ancient hominids. Some argue that if Neanderthals existed along early humans, they may not have been created in the image of God, as described in Genesis 1.27. Others suggest that Neanderthals, like humans, were part of God's creation and could also share in God's image although this is not explicitly stated in any scripture. The Book of Jubilees In ancient Jewish religious work, it's considered part of the, of the Sudepi Grappa. Though it is canon in some Christian traditions like the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, it rewrites much of Genesis and Exodus, offering a detailed timeline of events, from creation to the giving of the law in Sinai. It also introduces ideas like the division of history into jubilee cycles. The Forbidden True Name of God In Jewish tradition, the name God, Yahweh, is considered too holy to be spoken aloud and was gradually replaced with titles like Adonai, meaning Lord, or Hashem, meaning the name. According to rabbi teachings, only the high priest could utter the name during certain rituals in the temple and misuse of God's name was punishable by death. In Christian esotericism, there are theories that knowing the true name of God grants divine power. Melchizedek Melchizedek is a mysterious figure mentioned in Genesis 14, where he appears as the King of Salem and Priest of God Most High, who blesses Abraham. Later in Hebrews 7, he is presented as a type of Christ, a priest whose order is eternal and superior to the priesthood. Some traditions speculate that Melchizedek might have been a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ or a heavenly being. Bullinger's Five Crosses This concept comes from E. W. Bullinger, a 19th century theologian who claimed that there were five distinct crosses associated with Christ's crucifixion. He interpreted passages in the Gospels to suggest that multiple people were crucified with Jesus, 
two thieves, and possibly others, reflecting his more symbolic interpretation of biblical events. His ideas challenge the traditional view of the two thieves crucified beside Jesus, focusing instead on theological symbolism. Greek Gods in the Bible This refers to the hypothesis that references to other deities or supernatural beings in the Bible may correspond to Greek gods or mythological figures. For example, Acts 14 describes how the people in Lystra thought Paul and Barnabas were Hermes and Zeus in disguise. Some also argue that stories like those of the Nephilim and Sons of God in Genesis 6 could reflect parallels with Greek or other ancient mythologies.